morning, everyone. Uh, first, first, can you hear me? Yes. Great. So first of all, I would like to congratulate all the, the Turkish uh, friends listening to us because apparently today is your national holiday. You have a holiday, so congratulations for you. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Professor Tunser and uh, uh, Professor Sakac and Berkos also for the kind invitation. I'm happy to be here. It's a pity it's not in Turkey in person, but we'll, we'll reschedule that for the next session. But I'm still very happy and honored for this invitation. Uh, the situation of uh, the COVID here in Belgium is a bit comparable to, the, to other places. We are in, uh, in lockdown since mid-March. Uh, uh, we only do trauma cases, uh, emergency cases, and uh, oncological cases. We hope to be able to, uh, to, to unlock on, in the beginning of May, uh, but it's, the situation is not, still not clear. Uh, we are a bit in an, a surreal situation where the Ministry of Health uh, beginning this week is actually starting to control hospitals to see that uh, surgeons in general aren't doing any elective or non-urgent, uh, non-emergency cases. So it's a bit of a surreal situation, but we hope to, uh, to be able to, uh, to unlock very soon. So uh, this will be solved by itself. I'm just gonna put my presentation on. All right, so uh, we're going to start uh, talking about the subject of today, which is the DIP flap lymph nodes. So uh, some of the things have already been discussed uh, by the previous talker, but we're going to go a bit more into technical details. Uh, so these are the kind of patients we're confronted with. So patients uh, who need a breast reconstruction, who have very often uh, irradi irradiated and a scarred axillary region, and patients who have, of course, obviously lymphedema of the upper limb. And we wanna treat these two uh, problems, the breast reconstruction and the lymphedema in one shot. So what kind of tools do we have? Uh, we have, of course, the symptomatic ablative procedures, as you all know. So we have the liposuction, the Borson type liposuction, and the dermolipectomies that we sometimes perform, but thank, uh, thankfully not very often. And then we have the physiologic or the reconstructive procedures and the previous speaker has extensively spoken about the LVA surgery. I'm not gonna talk about this. I'm gonna talk about the lymph node transplantations and we're gonna of course focus uh, to the region of the groin because this is the topic of interest of today. The condition to, to perform these kind of surgeries is, is of course to have pitting present to some extent. Without getting into the stages, you need some kind of pitting in order to be able, or at least to have an indication to perform a, a physiologic uh, operation. This is the approach that we use in Brussels. We call it the BALLS approach. So it's a Brussels approach to lymphatic limb surgery. We're talking about lymphedema patients with, as I said, with pitting lymphedema. We do some preoperative imaging on them, the, the fluorescence imaging, lymphocytography, which is done uh, in, in every single patient that we operate. And we incorporated since a few years also the lympho MRI that we perform on a re regular basis nowadays. When we have functional lymphatics, then the patient is of course a candidate to perform lymph, uh, lymphovenous anastomosis when there is no scar, or we're talking about the root of the limb, so talking about the axilla, when there is no scar in the root of the limb, we perform LVA alone. When there is a scar, then we combine the lymph node transplantation with the LVA. And again, when we don't have any functional lymphatics, but with the patient with pitting lymphedema, when there is no scar, we perform the lymph node transplantation to the site of choice, and I'm gonna show the choices that we have. And when there is a scar at the root of the limb, again, we have to address this scar and we have to go to the root of the limb. And then the lymph node transplantation goes, of course, to the axilla. So this, these are solitary lymph node transplantations. Both patients have undergone uh, breast reconstruction previously and had secondarily lymph node transplantations that went up to the, to the axillary zone because they had a scarred axilla. And again, you see this is only the skin paddle and the lymph nodes go higher also uh, into, the, into the limb. Uh, this is nowadays my second choice when we don't have a scarred axilla is to go to, to the elbow region, to the internal part of the elbow region. Uh, again, when you, when you don't have to go as high as, as necessary to the axilla, you can go to this region, 
especially when the problems are situated in this region. And in the beginning, we used to do, uh, I liked to do a lot of uh, what we called the dorsal wrist transplantation, the Rolex flap, because the patients already always had a very unsightful bump on the, on the wrist, on the dorsal wrist. So now we tend to do that less and less. And I like to go more to the, to the elbow region. So what do we do for the planning? As I said, for selected cases, and we're talking mainly about stage uh, two, three uh, patients, WHO lymphedema stage two, three. We do nowadays lympho MRI, and for those who wish can read the article. And what we get from this, um, from this examination is that first of all, we get confirmation of the pitting, which is clinical, but you also have a very nice mapping of where the liquid is situated, so you know where it is. This is a lower limb, just to illustrate the, the white spots are all, all, uh, all of them edema, lymphedema. And then we get an exact mapping for the lymph, lymphovenous anastomosis. So the, the left arrow on the top is the, the lymphatic and the, the small arrow is the vein. And you can distinguish those very nicely because the, the lymphatics have a beady pattern on this MRI and the veins are smooth. So you can, you can really know where they run and where they cross. So you know where to, to place your incision and have minimal incisions with a very high predictability. So it's very important to tailor the, the, the treatment to the specific patient. It's not one, uh, one size fits all. And because of that, it's important to know how to manage fear and anxiety because one of the, the problems when you're starting to do this kind of surgery, that everything is very unpredictable. And to, in, in order to augment this, sorry for it's a bit wazy, uh, the slide, but of course, we are all hard workers, but we need to have knowledge of the anatomy. We need to have knowledge of the specific anatomy of the patient, and we have to be able to plan the, the patient correctly. And this is, of course, the only way to, uh, to be successful, or at least uh, to have a high success rate in this kind of in all surgery, but also in this kind of surgery where the anatomy uh, can sometimes be a bit more tricky. Of course, we all want to avoid to have to treat these kind of patients and to end up with this. So the, I think safety is of course a major issue when you perform uh, groin lymph node flaps. And this is the reason why many surgeons don't really like to perform this flap anymore. But um, with, with the knowledge extending for, of the anatomy, of the mapping system, et cetera, it's, it's a very safe flap to perform. We're just gonna look very briefly into literature. So we know from the Sarico um, publications, from already years ago that there is a risk of donor site lymphatic vessel, vessel dysfunction when harvesting the groin lymph node flaps. So there is a great caution to be taken. And in their publication, they looked at 10 patients who had a vascularized groin lymph node flaps and 10 of them had postoperatively uh, lymphocentigraphy. And what they saw is, um, so they looked at the transport index mainly uh, on this scintigraphy. And what they saw is that out of the 10 patients that they scanned, four patients were normal, but six out of 10 patients had a slowing of their transport index, and even two were totally abnormal. So, and it's important to emphasize that out of these 10 patients, none of them had a clinical lymphedema, but they all had an alteration, or in two of, out of the 10, a real abnormal lymph scintigraphy postoperatively. So it's really important to keep that in mind and not to just, uh, pop in and do these kind of flaps without being cautious and without taking some extra measures. There was this atomic bomb that was uh, launched for, for the groin lymph node flap, or at least for the lymph node flaps, with this uh, Parisian publication of Alvinia, when they looked at their series and they looked into don donor site complications. And they, it's, it's a mixed uh, series of inguinal lymph nodes and also lateral thoracic lymph nodes, but you see that they had a considerable amount of lymphedema of the donor site. And when you look at them, they had 36% of donor site lymphedema when harvesting the thoracic lymph nodes and 15% with the inguinal lymph nodes. So it's an overall 25%, which is one out of four, which is of course huge. And you have to, this just wants to remind everyone that there is great caution. And this time we're talking about real clinical lymphedema. So not about some kind of transport index seen on lymphocentigraphy. So it's important to be really cautious. And we have some very well experienced and distinguished colleagues, uh, the group from, um, from Barcelona, who are courageous to, to even uh, publish one of their cases, that of domicide lymphedema after a harvest of a growing lymph node flap. So again, I think this, it's important to know that this is not only an abnormality that you can see on, um, on lymphocentigraphy, so you really have to be cautious 
when you start doing this, uh, this kind of surgery. We know from the uh, nice publication from Ming Wei Cheng from Taiwan, that the number of lymph nodes in the harvested flap is very important. It sounds logic, but this has been proven that the more lymph nodes you harvest in your flap, the better your result is gonna be. But we have to know that of course, it's not about what you remove, but it's also about what you leave. So it's important to uh, respect this, uh, this balance of the nodes that you can harvest and the nodes that you have to leave in order to have, not to run into trouble. You augment your security, of course, not by only by anatomic, uh, anatomic um, knowledge, but also by taking extra measures. And Diane and Smith uh, published the reverse lymphatic mapping in which uh, you inject technetium uh, distally on your limb, so in between the toes or between the, the fingers for the upper limb and endocyanin green uh, on, the, on the side where you harvest the nodes in order to be able to distinguish between the nodes draining the limb and the nodes that you harvest. We do it a bit in a modified fashion, but it's also reverse lymphatic mapping. We inject uh, patent blue distally on the limb because it makes it easy for us, and I'm gonna show an image a bit later, to be able to see the nodes when the flap is being harvested or to see the lymphatics that you, you should avoid. And we use indecision in green in selected cases in, in order to see where uh, the nodes are that we harvest. And this is one of the cases we have done with indecision in green. I'm not sure it's very clear, but on the left hand side of your screen, you see the injection places. This is the, the, the black lines are the lines of the, of the skip uh, lymph node flap. And you see that the, the indecision in green is running into the flap. And when the flap has been raised, you also see this indecision in green in the patient open. In this case, for example, you see we had visual blue running into the flap coming from the lower limb. And in this case, we had to abort this groin and go to the other groin. So it's really important to have this kind of dual mapping in order to, um, to, to really augment your safety. A second way to augment your safety is, of course, the design of your flap. And we, 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 had, to look, we had a good look at that using a, a whole series of uh, CT scanners doing an anatomic study and how to design the, the lymph node flap. So we know uh, from, from publications and from anatomic work that we are the nodes of interest are the nodes uh, superficial in the groin, cranial to the origin of the pedicle and in the safe zone. And what is this safe zone? So it's important to know what is the safe zone. And the safe zone uh, has, has nicely been published by other groups, uh, by Tirani and Taylor uh, and by uh, Hiro Suami from, uh, uh, from Australia. And you see that the nodes in the groin, the ones in green, uh, the, the top ones, just under the, the inguinal ligament in, in yellow, are the ones of interest. And you see that you can select those very nicely, but you see that there is a crossover with the lymph nodes draining the lower limb. So these are the ones that you, that you have to be cautious with, and these are the ones that you can run into trouble with. So it's important to really have a good look at anatomy. And as the previous speaker has spoken, there is a very nice, 3D anatomy in this region, and you know that the superficial branch of the circumflex uh, iliac artery has, so we're talking about the superficial branch, has a deep branch and a superficial branch. So you have to really know this 3D anatomy because it's a bit more peculiar than, than one vessel running into your flap. And you can selectively harvest the superficial branch of the superficial circumflex artery. So it's important to know this, this anatomy. And again, we looked at many articles describing very nicely the anatomy. And it's very important to understand this 3D uh, uh, anatomy in the groin, which is very specific. Uh, and it's not a planar anatomy. So in, in order to run out of trouble, you have to respect this anatomy. So we have, we have uh, divided the groin in three zones. And we, we, uh, we looked at the golden triangle, which is zone two on this, on this image. And this zone two is superior and lateral uh, to the superficial circumflex iliac artery and vein and to the superficial iliac, uh, um, superficial inferior epigastric uh, vein and to a lesser extent the artery, but for sure the vein. And we had a look at the lymph nodes in this zone and what we saw. So we mapped the lymph nodes in the whole groin region. So you can read that in the article if you wish in more detail, but specifically for zone two, so the golden triangle, we saw that there were always enough nodes. So you had on average three nodes and that they were sizable. Sizable means that they were not too small. They were not one millimeter nodes on average 7.8. And then for this reason, because there is a whole discussion when you talk to uh, patients doing these kind of, uh, of lymph node flaps on a high volume, that there is a, the whole discussion about the sizable nodes. 
And sizable nodes, and this is why we describe this uh, lymph node units, it's at least one node bigger than 10 millimeters or two or more nodes of more than five millimeters and that are less than one centimeter away so that you can harvest really a lymph node group, this lymph node unit. And then we looked uh, to, to the relationship of this lymph node unit to some uh, anatomic landmarks in order to make this predictable. And then we, we measured the distances to anatomic landmarks. And this is a very important thing to notice that in all cases, in all cases, the lymph nodes of interest, the lymph nodes of interest were superior to the, uh, to the growing trees. And that there is always sufficient, even if you select these, these nodes, there is always sufficient pedicle length of about on average four, uh, four centimeters, with, which, which is usually good enough to do your, your anastomosis. And this is the theoretical average of the design. So the way we do it is actually mark the points from the uh, pubical, uh, pubis uh, tubercle to the anterior superior iliac spine, divided by two minus one centimeters towards the pubis and the nodes that you want to harvest are 1.5 centimeters total to this point. Of course, we dopper the vessels extra in order to, to know where the pedicle runs, and this is the way we design the flap. So this made the, the flap design very predictable for us, not only the, the, the design of the flap, but knowing where your nodes are uh, compared to this anatomy. And of course, when you open up, you find the vessels and you can find the lymph node flaps. You see the pedicle, which is about four, four centimeters in length, and the lymph nodes are located here. So in order to avoid the iatrogenic lymphedema of your donor site, always stay above your inguinal crease and respect the golden triangle with a the theoretical roof. So between the, the skia and the sia, with the theoretical roof of the inguinal ligament. And of course, these are the nodes that we would like to avoid. So the blue nodes are the nodes we would like to avoid. And these are the ones that we stay in patent blue preoperatively and that when we open the flap, when we harvest the flap, we sometimes can see those and can really selectively avoid these kind of nodes or lymphatics. And, in, and it, it happened to me already two times uh, in the past 10 years that I had to abort a groin and to go to the other groin. And I do inform my patients that this can happen. And these are, of course, the nodes that we would like to harvest uh, in our flap in the golden triangle. Another question, and this is the topic of today, is, is what, how do you do it when you have to do this uh, groin lymph node flap conjoined with your DIP flap? Because it makes, of course, things a bit more tricky. So it makes your 3D anatomy a bit more complicated. You have the deep vessels uh, for, for your abdominal-based breast reconstruction. And as we said, you have the SIA and the CIEV, and the SKIA and SKIEV for your lymph nodes that you want to harvest. So it's really a 3D uh, vascular anatomy that you really have to respect and think about. The question is, is it simply a DIP flap with some extra tissue on it? And the answer is yes and no. And we're gonna see why it's yes and why it's a no. How do we map the abdominal perforator flap? And I think for most people doing microsurgery and doing breast reconstruction, this is not new. I mean, the multi-detector multi, uh, CT scan mapping is, is being applied by most surgeons performing this kind of surgery. So we know how to design the flaps, but as you can see, we harvest the groin lymph nodes on the same flap or block. So in one, in one piece with the abdominal flap, and this is the way that it looks like and on a sheet. So how do you design your deep flap when you want to harvest it together or block with your lymph nodes from the groin? You have to think of the height of the flap on your abdomen. You have to sometimes adapt your perforator selection. And of course, as we talked, you have to look at your donor side morbidity. We, we talked about the security. But the second problem is the seroma and the groin that can sometimes happen. So the head of the flap, when you Google, and these are just pictures that I Googled on, on uh, about the deep flap design, and you see all kind of very, uh, very different, these are not my patients, but very, very different designs on the abdomen. And you, you see that the things is, and this is important to mention, that sometimes some of the harvests or some of the, the deep flaps are re relatively high. I'm not even talking about the aesthetic problem with having a, a scar really mid in the abdomen, but some of them of the things I've seen on, on, on Google, on internet is even having double scars on the abdomen, which make it of course unsightly. And when you have to conjoin that with a, a, a groin lymph node flap, it makes it complicated. So you really have to try to lower your abdominal scar. And I'm gonna show a few cases. This is for me the, the limit for aesthetic donor site. And this is one of my patients. 
So this was the pre-operative design done by our drone by our residents. And you see and on the, uh, the day before surgery, on the morning of the surgery, I had to lower the design in order to, to, to have a better access to the groin. So you see the lines, the black lines that are a bit more vague from the design of the resident and I lowered the flap. And you see this is the breast with a lymph node flap to, uh, to the groin and uh, to the axilla, sorry. And you see that the scar for me, this is really the aesthetic limit, it's relatively high. So this is the design that we started with and we tried to push it down and again, for aesthetic reasons, but of course, when you wanna to go to the groin lymph node flap, you have to go this way. So we push it down and we start to go in this way. So making the, the, the design a bit more soft. And then all the crosses you see, of course, all the X's on the flap are the, 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 the perforators marked from the, from the CT scan. And the rest of the design is done by, as I showed from the previous publication. And then we push the scars lower and lower. This is a bit aesthetically better, as you can see. And we go lower and then we can get to these kind of designs where you're, uh, abdominal scar really goes down, makes your access to the groin much better, and gives you also, of course, an aesthetic better result. So this is the kind of results aesthetically on, or pushing your scar down that we wish for and for the DIP and for harvesting the lymph nodes. And this is the, the kind of, of scars that you would like to have that you could always, almost compare to, to the scars that you would do if you, if you would just do body control surgery. Um, Lindenblatt uh, from Switzerland has looked at it and finally uh, most of, of people performing, most of us are plastic surgeons and it's important to think about aesthetics and so we, uh, we design the flaps nowadays really the abdominal plastic kind of scars and you see that there we go very close to the groin region and it makes your, your lymph node flap much more predictable. So again it's going to an aesthetic abdominal plasty uh, design in deep flap, and you see both those patients also had a lymph node transplantation, and you see that the scar is pushed low in order to have good access to your lymph nodes, but of course it makes also your aesthetic result much better. So why do we have to go low? Because a too high design will make your dissection much more difficult, you have, you have to undermine your, your groin much more extensively, and especially because you want to reach the origin of, of your, your, uh, your skip or your, your, uh, your superficial uh, circumflex vessels, which are already small, you really have to reach the origin. And when, when the design of your flap is too high, reaching that is, too, is difficult and you might run into trouble with too small vessels. A second problem is that when you do have an extensive undermining and you're growing, sometimes the flap and the axilla might become a bit too bulky. And it's more difficult to manage the donor site for, for donor site uh, problems. The second question is, how do you choose your perforator? Do you just choose it the same way that you would do it for a classic DIP flap, or do you have to manage it a bit a different way? Again, it's the same, try, the same uh, trinity that you have to, planning is important, and of course, the knowledge of the anatomy is important. Two things that you have to look at is, of course, the best perforator that you would like to harvest for your DIP flap, and the size of the breast, taking into account, of course, your lymph nodes. When you have a small breast and you have the lymph nodes harvested on, on the side, as you can see on this image, then you, you could take an ipsilateral perforator, so ipsilateral to your groin lymph node. So you, you take your perforator on the same side as you harvest your lymph nodes. And this is the flap that you would harvest, the rest would be discarded. When you have a big or a bigger breast, you would aim to go to the perforator on the contralateral side to your lymph nodes, okay? So you, you harvest the lymph nodes on one side and your perforator is on the other side of your abdomen, which will give you obviously a bigger breast, which you would like to aim in this, in this kind of cases. And sometimes you have to change uh, your plan from your initial uh, perforator selection if you would just do purely a DIP. Uh, so it's important to, to try to select your lymph nodes uh, your groin, the side of groin that you would like to harvest before pl planning your, your perforated selection. So this is an important thing to, to look at. The second thing is how do you set your flap into the, to the recipient site, into the breast? So if we go to the contralateral breast, so I'm talking about contralateral to your uh, harvested lymph nodes from the groin, then you would have to flip your, your flap upside down and set the flap in, in, in a horizontal fashion. And these are the zones that you would discard and the rest would be, of course, you do your, your uh, vessels to your axilla and your uh, DIP vessels to the mammary, uh, internal mammary vessels, to the internal mammary chain. And these are the zones you would discard. Uh, 
if you go to the same side of your um, of your lymph nodes, so ipsilateral to your lymph nodes, then I set in the flap in in a, in a vertical fashion. So I change also the this, the the way of insetting my flap according to the side of the lymph nodes and according to, your, to to the perforator that we have selected. And these are the zones we're going to discard and shape our breast. And the third question is, what about the recipient site in the axilla? So if, um, mainly the patients that we, we perform this kind of surgery to, with the lymph nodes to the axilla are, are scarred axilla that have been irradiated. So it's uh, these kind of patients where you see a heavy irradiation damage uh, a scarred axilla, when you touch it, it's very often an empty, non-padded axilla. You can feel the ribs. It's also painful, obviously, for the patients and very discomfortable, uncomfortable. And they also have very often, as you can see on the top, the, the two, the two uh, pictures on the right, these patients also have a uh, diminishment or, or uh, uh, lesser of, of a mobility. It's been published, and you see this is a publication already from the 60s about the importance of vascularity of, of lymph nodes uh, when you interrupt their, their, uh, their supply. So it's important to, to not be tempted to, uh, because you harvest the flap or block with your DIP, not to do any uh, anastomosis for your, for your lymph, uh, lymph nodes because it's been shown, and this is an old publication, but we all agree on the fact that when you see, uh, it's a bit of a, of a crazy picture, but you see the lymph nodes uh, on, the, on, the, on the DIP flap, the internal mammary uh, anastomosis are, has already been performed and you see the lymph nodes bleeding. So it can be very tempting not to do this extra vascular anastomosis into your, into your axilla, but again, it's very important. Your, your, flap is going to, your, your flap is going to survive, but if you do not do extra anastomosis, you'll see that there's going to be some arch architectural changes and that your lymph nodes are going to become actually a fat flap without having a good function. Another publication from end of the 17 has, of course, shown that when you transfer a, a lymph node flap, it's very important to have a scar removal because you have to create an open system. And uh, the group from Barcelona has also published it very nice that you have, besides your, your pure lymph node pump flap that uh, Mingwei Cheng has talked about, uh, um, the Barcelona group has shown and has published that there are some vascular connect connections or intra-flap connections that are important. And this is important why you have to remove this, the whole scar and have an open system in order for your flap to integrate. So the first step when we perform this kind of surgery to the axilla is always to remove the full scar. You see all the white structures are, are really, it's a hostile axilla, uh, it's, it's, it's been irradiated. So all this white has to go away from your axilla. So you have to do a full neurolysis, you have to release your vessels, you have to release your nerves uh, in order to have less pain, uh, remove neuromas, uh, and have better mobility. We, of course, expose um, the pedicle on which we are going to perform our anastomosis here in pink. And then, of course, we have to expose the, the axillary vein. Sorry for hopping. We have to expose the axillary vein in order to put the lymph nodes on contact with this vein. Sometimes, with all measures that we take, we see that for anatomic reasons, sometimes you have some intra-flap uh, variations that you see, and sometimes you see that reaching up in your axilla, it's really, really important to put your nodes in contact with your axilla every and you see that it's, it's still difficult to reach your, your, uh, your axilla high up. In these cases, you can always, for extra mobility, can, cut one of the two pedicles from this golden triangle in order to give the, the, the lymph nodes a higher swing and perform your anastomosis in a more, uh, in, in a way that you can reach or put your lymph nodes in a place where, where they belong in order to treat your lymphedema in a correct way. And this way you can, you can uh, always reach your lymph nodes uh, high in the axilla. What about your, uh, your donor site? So we, we've spoken about donor site lymphedema, so we're not gonna go back to that, but when you combine a DIP flap uh, with a vascularized lymph node transplant, uh, it's been an evolution, and in our department, uh, Musa Fahamdi has been doing this since 2006, uh, and I've been doing this myself since, since 2010. And there is an evolution in the way that we handle the, the, the donor site for complications besides donor site lymphedema. So seroma and wound breakdown for a second as a second thing. Seroma is an important thing that uh, can happen when you harvest these grown lymph node flaps with uh, a DIP flap, and why? It's because you have a huge dead space 
uh, from your abdomen, uh, and especially when you harvest with lymph nodes, you have lymphatic fluid or wound, uh, serous wound uh, fluid that, that runs in, in, this, uh, in this huge uh, cavity. And, and this is why you have, you have a high rate of seroma when you do a, a concomitant DIP with lymph nodes from, from your groin. So this is a very important issue. Uh, and we had a look at that. So how do we avoid seroma? One of, of course, the first thing is, that, as you can see there, we also map the, when we map the DIP, we map the lymph nodes in the groin. You can see that with a yellow arrow on, on the right. So we, we could do a good planning as we have shown. And then this, this is something that, that has been introduced by, by Mustafa Hamdi a few years ago. In order to avoid seroma, what we do is we harvest, once we planned our, our DIP with lymph nodes, in, in a correct way, we 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 make this uh, depetalized flap, little flap from the abdominal the superior abdominal region, which stays attached to the flap uh, of the abdomen that you're going to close down. So once you have removed your DIP with a lymph node flap, you see this little flap that stays attached to the superior abdominal flap that goes down when you, when when you close your abdomen. We do uh, quite a big amount of quilting sutures in the groin in order to, again, ma minimize the dead space. We put a drain, a separate drain. So you put the abdominal drains for the DIP and we put a separate drain for, for the groin, uh, groin harvest. And then we tack, you see, we tack this flap from the superior abdomen down into the groin region in order to give uh, a good uh, closure. And this is the way we do it. So we have this small extra uh, flap that we put in the groin in order to minimize effects. And this avoids its aroma on, on one hand. And this also, uh, you see the donor side is pretty nice and smooth because in one, one of the problems is sometimes when you harvest, especially in thin patients, when you harvest uh, the groin and also in, in, in a bit more uh, obese patients, you see that you have a very unsightful dimple in, uh, in your groin region. So this is also a very important issue. And when you use this small flap that you pull down from your superior abdomen, this is very nicely avoided as well. So to reduce further ribonocyte morbidity, we had a look uh, to our series and of course to the literature and we, we talked about avoiding the, the lower limb uh, draining lymph nodes. We do the reverse lymphatic mapping. We use perioperative patent blue and you see the number of publications on the right hand side that have talked about this. We put a drain in the donor site. We put the quilting sutures and all this has been published. I think it's very important to clip the lymphatic vessels uh, of your donor site, of your, uh, of your groin, because otherwise, again, they're going to drain. Just burning them or bipolaring them is usually not sufficient. So it's very important to clip it. You take your time to clip uh, the side branches. In some cases, we use fi fibrin glue. But the new thing here is the superior abdominal small flap uh, that we pull into the donor site in order to minimize these kind of uh, problems. So we looked into our series and we had two periods before doing this, this small extra flap and after doing this extra flap. And we saw, uh, so we started quilting a bit more aggressively and with this uh, little flap as an extra, we saw the donor side morbidity in our series, the seroma rate going from 60 to 18% and the uh, groin wound uh, breakdown of wound problems also lo lo uh, lowered in a very significant way. And we looked into risk factors and there again, there was a very high rate of uh, having the seroma much higher than when harvesting the lymph node flap uh, solitarily. And it's combined with the DIP again because of the wide undermining in the big dead space and especially in smokers. So especially in smokers, you have to take very good care when harvesting uh, DIP concomitant with your groin lymph node flaps because this is, has a high rate of uh, seroma and wound breakdown. So the conclusions of, uh, of this presentation, which are actually the recommendations how to do this kind of DIP with lymph node, is again, respect uh, the golden triangle, have a correct planning of your flap, respect uh, staying above your drawing crease because this is a very important, and uh, do the reverse lymphatic mapping in, in some way that you select for yourself and the way we do it, as I said, is within the Andosian in green and with patent blue. Take your flap low enough. So don't harvest high DIP flaps when you do this kind of surgery. And you're, if you're uncomfortable put, pulling your flap down, it's sometimes better to abort the DIP uh, because otherwise you're gonna run into trouble again, especially when doing it combined with, uh, with your lymph nodes. So select your perforator depending on the size of the breast and of the best perforator. But again, also select it 
depending on the lymph nodes uh, on the groin that you're going to harvest. It's very important to do that in a bit of a different way that you would, uh, you would do your DIP. And again, as I said already, design your flap low enough. For the micro part, prepare your axilla in a correct way. If you do not do that, and some, some surges are attempted, not to too widely take, take time to, to do the axilla. And actually, sometimes the axilla takes a, a considerable amount of time because it's, you have to really do extensive scar removal without harming structures, without going, of course, hitting your axillary vein. So take time to prepare your axilla in a correct way. And don't be tempted not to do your axillary anastomosis. And again, think about your flap inset already preoperative. This is part of your planning. If you do it ipsi or contralateral to your lymph nodes uh, for, for, the, uh, for the breast. Take care of your donor site. So we said clipping lymphatics, putting a drain, quilting suture, the superior DP last flap. And this is actually the end of my talk. And I would like again to thank uh, the hosts for their very kind invitations. It's really a pity that I couldn't join you to, uh, to have a great meal and some friendship, but I hope we can do that very soon again.